This is me, and this is my new hardcore world. In this video, I want to attempt to survive 100 Minecraft days in a hardcore survival. One day in Minecraft is 20 minutes real lifetime, meaning I must spend over 33 hours of real time in this Minecraft survival world. Remember, it's hardcore. One mistake and it's over. I'm not sure how hard or easy this challenge may be, but I know for certain there's three things I want to attempt to achieve in 100 days of Minecraft Hardcore. What are those three things? I'm glad you've asked. The first one being defeating the Ender Dragon, arguably one of the hardest things to do in a hardcore Minecraft experience. The second thing on the list is to defeat the Wither, the second boss of Minecraft, and the third thing is going to be even more difficult, to obtain full netherite tools and armor. So, what am I waiting for? Let the 100 days begin. So, here we go. It was day one and I jumped straight into things. Close to my spawn there was a forest and I began chopping a tree with my hand. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, but it was my only option. From my Minecraft experience, I knew getting basic tools and even shelter was my number one priority, especially in a hardcore world. Over a lake nearby, I spotted some sugarcane, a useful item which I know I'd be needing later. After gathering all the sugarcane, I dived into a river nearby. I needed food. I found some fish. I knew starting out, food could be a challenge, so I decided to get this as fast as I possibly could. Once I gathered a few fish, I went off exploring. I tried to find somewhere high up. I tried a tree. I got on top and I looked around for pigs or cows or anything. Luckily for me, I spotted some pigs. After I took the food I needed, I decided to take my pickaxe and start digging down. I needed temporary shelter. It was nothing great, but it did the job. Took my crafting table and I started going lower down into the ground. I crafted a furnace and instantly put my food in there. My hunger was already beginning to deplete. While I was letting my food cook, I decided to go to the overworld and chop trees until the sunset. And there I was. The first day was coming to a close. I stood there and watched the sunset, but not for long. I needed to get back down to my base. I knew that things were about to get very, very scary outside. So I then decided to spend that night mining for all the essentials, coal, iron, and maybe even some diamonds if I was to get lucky. I didn't find too much iron, but I found enough for a pickaxe and a sword. So I decided to craft both of these. Here we go, it was day two. I looked out my base and I saw sunlight. Day two wasn't really exciting. I went adventures to places I haven't ever been before and found some cows and even some sheep. But unfortunately for those sheep, a wolf was very, very hungry. Anyway, it took me so long to get these cows back to my base, the sun was already beginning to set. I gave the cows their new home and trapped them in. At this point, everything was looking good. I lit up their island and decided to make a shield, and that was pretty much it for day two. Day 3, things started to get interesting. I took my iron pickaxe and my stone pickaxe on a mining trip and found a cave. I knew that I needed iron and I needed armor and I needed it fast. I found loads of iron. In fact, I nearly found a whole entire stack of it. I knew this would be enough to make all the essential tools and even some armor. I was very careful walking around this cave. The lava could have got me out of the game instantly, but I turned around and there it was. Diamonds, just over the lava. Unfortunately for me, it was only two diamonds, but it was diamonds and I took them. After getting the diamonds, I knew I needed to get out of there and make the armor. On my way back, I found my first enemy, but it was no problem, and I took care of the zombie pretty easily. I then went back up to the top and made all my armor. And there it was. I stood there with my full iron armor on, and I was ready for day four. Up until day four, I had nowhere to call home, so that was when construction started. I wanted an underground base. I wanted to minimize my interaction with enemies, so I thought by setting up base underground, I could be safe here. After I'd finished the first stage of construction, I began adding in some chests. I would need some storage later down the line. I mostly did base work for day four, which led us on to day five. I spent this day pretty much underground, mining for coal and all of the other essentials. I had a lot of coal and iron, but not enough. I then went above ground to take care of my cows and chop down some trees. Day 6. I was mining for absolutely ages. I came across a bunch of enemies, but also some valuables. Gold, redstone, lapis, and even some diamonds. I spent many, many days mining and found many, many diamonds. I needed diamond armor if I was going to survive any longer. For day 9, I went back above ground. I needed to set up my farms and get my cows breeding. So that is exactly what I did. And also the cows seemed pretty happy to see me. To start day 10, I decided to smelt everything I had mined from the previous days. And I even saved up enough diamonds to build a diamond pickaxe. This could take me on to the next stage of the game. The nether. 
It was the end of day 10 and the start of day 11. I decided to go mining through obsidian because I knew of course I'd be able to make a nether pool. So that's what I did. And I also did some housework and dived into the river to do some extension of my island. Day 13 I went exploring close to my base and stumbled across this abandoned nether portal. I was able to pick up some goods. Day 14 I built some base protection so no mobs could enter. From around day 15 to day 19 I went back down to the depths of the caves to see if I could get my hands on some more diamonds. I was close to getting diamond armor but not close enough so I went mining for these days to secure every last diamond I needed. I also picked up some iron and some coal on the way. Day 19, I got back to my base. I had secured 38 diamonds in total. This was my opportunity to cover myself in diamond armor. So that is exactly what I did. I started crafting the diamond armor and even made a sword. By that time, the advancement was made. I was stood there in my shiny blue diamond armor, but I was not worthy of wearing it yet. So I decided to put it back on an armor stand and put my iron armor on, and then I went back out to my farm to do some more work on it. I knew that if I wanted to go any further, I would need to breed my cows for an enchantment table. But on the way back to my base, something unimaginable happened. A new foe had appeared outside my base in the river. I knew that I had to take care of it. I got my bow and arrow and I took a brief moment in my base to realize what I was about to get myself into. A battle. Then the time came. I take aim and took them out one by one. They dropped some loot and some valuables, so I went into the river to collect that. But in return of winning this battle, I was given a curse. Before I knew it, it was day 21. I decided to do some more building in my base and it was a really chillax day. I used my bedroom as an opportunity to show off my valuables using blocks of lapis, redstone, iron and gold. It was day 22 and I decided to go and breed all of my cows and get ready to get rid of them for all of their leather. It was time to prepare the enchantment table. I went back to my base and decided to craft up some bookshelves. This would be needed for the enchanting room. For day 24 I realized I need a place for this enchantment table. I couldn't just place it anywhere and I needed some space for the bookshelves. So I decided to build a whole entire room for it. I even made a room for things such as smokers and blast furnaces to speed up things like smelting. I also took the opportunity at the end of day 24 to build a massive mine all the way down to diamond level. It was day 25 and I set up the bookshelves and got ready for the enchantment table. I built it by placing my two diamonds, four obsidian and one book in there. It was ready to be planted and there it was. I did some extra decorating to the place and it ended up looking pretty nice. The first thing I decided to enchant was my diamond pickaxe. And I got the best enchants I could have possibly asked for. The sword not so much. It took a few attempts but I got there in the end with a decent enchant I was happy with. I then realized it was time to enter the nether. I needed more XP and I needed it pretty fast so I went deep into the nether to try and get some quartz and XP. Luckily for me the fortress was really close by but I needed to find some piglins. These would become useful for trading. So that was it. I trapped a piglin and tossed him a bunch of gold. He done some really good trades and I ended up getting around about 16 eye of enders. I then went to explore in the fortress, going past withers and also some blazes for some blaze powder. For most of the days in day 31 onwards, I decided that it would be best to make the Eye of Enders, make an ender chest and even get some more XP for enchanting. I also got some glowstone because this could be used to decorate my base and light it up a little bit more. I pretty much spent day 31 all the way to 40 pretty much going for XP. After enchanting most of my armor, it was getting closer to the moment that I was scared for the ender dragon fight. Although I knew I was going to be prepared, it was still a worry because one wrong move with the ender dragon and it's all over. By day 38, I was fully enchanted up and day 39, I pretty much spent doing some decorating around my base and getting some phantom membranes. I could use phantom membranes for potions of slow falling, which would be useful for the end. I also went collecting arrows. By day 40, I went exploring. At first, my adventure was quiet until this happened, a village. I found some friendly villagers which allowed me to do trades. It took a while but I was able to get a mending book. Something which was a game changer for the future of this world. So I spent day 41 pretty much waiting until all the villagers were ready to trade. I then went with my sticks and got a bunch of emeralds. Which ultimately meant I could go back to the librarian and purchase one of his mending books. It was day 44. I was able to put mending on my pickaxe and rename it. Day 45, Ender Dragon preparation was well underway, making potions of strength and also slow falling. I did brewing for quite a while. I wanted to over prepare as much as possible for the Ender Dragon fight just in case anything was to go wrong. 
Day 46, I did some last preparations for the Ender Dragon fight, going out to find some apples. The reason I got apples is to ultimately make golden apples, something which would be very useful for the end fight. Here it was, day 47. I walked around my base and gave it one last look, and I said goodbye, because it may be the last time I ever see this again. I gave everything one last glance, even my cows. To end off day 47, I got some rest. The next day was a massive day, the Ender Dragon fight. Day 48, I checked through my inventory and made sure I had everything I would need for the Ender Dragon fight. One wrong move here and everything could be all over. Everything I've worked hard for so far, but that didn't stop me. I threw my eyes of Ender in the air and I was ready to go exploring. At one point, I had to set sail across the ocean. It wasn't ideal, but it had to be done. Finding this stronghold took multiple days. In fact, the Eyes of Ender were pointing me in every direction possible. Until I came too close that the Eye of Ender couldn't go anywhere else apart from directly above the stronghold. I dug straight down, and here it was. For day 52, I pretty much spent that day exploring the stronghold and was able to come out with some pretty good books. And then it was time. I prepared the end portal, and everything was beginning to seem real. I drank both of my potions, and there was no turning back now. I entered the portal calmly and went up to the Ender Dragon fight. This was it. At first, my aim felt a bit weird, but as the battle progressed, I became more and more confident. My aim was incredible. Most of my shots were accurate, but the Ender Dragon was too fast for me. I had to get rid of the End Crystals before it was too late. All my bow shots were pretty accurate until the end. I had a massive struggle trying to get one of them. I fired my bow and there it was. The final End Crystal. I glanced around and there was no more to be destroyed. It was time for the Ender Dragon fight itself. The Ender Dragon was quick, but not quick enough. In fact, I was able to get a small glass of its Dragon Breath. It came down to the middle and I attacked its tail. This was the easiest way I was going to get rid of this. Luckily for me, it came down again and I was able to finish off the battle. There it was, the Ender Dragon, disintegrating in front of my eyes. I felt victorious. I grabbed the egg, and look at that smile on my face. I was happy, but not happy enough. I needed elytras. I went into the end city and looked around. After a while of exploring, I found one, and I was scared it didn't have a boat, until I glanced over to the left, and there it was. The end ship. This contains an elytra, which would change the whole way I could move around in this game. I swung my pickaxe and got entry under the boat. I was able to take the elytras, and also some valuables in the chests. I equipped the elytras and debated whether I should leave the end city, but no. I needed to loot it. The shulker boxes that were in the end city were too good to pass by, but after that, I then decided to head home. There it was, day 66, I had the ender dragon head. I placed it on an armor stand and gave it some clothes. Day 67, I used that time to enchant some more, and got a sword. And day 68, well, I had elytras. And I got a bit too excited. From day 69 to 74, this is my time to build. I had a bunch of creativity that I need to let out, so I built a bridge from my house all the way to the farm island. I also built a bit of a better house for the cows and some cool pathways. I also made space for a potato farm and also a wheat farm. And also, because enemy creatures were able to get on my island, I built a massive wall surrounding it. There it was. By day 74, I was really happy with my base, the outside and the inside. I pretty much had everything I need, but I wasn't finished yet. I had two other goals to get done, the netherite and also the wither. These weren't going to be easy, so I got to work. Well, now was the time for me to prepare for my next goal, and that would be the wither battle. So to start day 75, I went through and enchanted a sword to try and get looting, because to get wither heads, you need really good luck or you need a really good sword. After using plenty of XP and Lapis, I was able to get a looting too, but it wasn't good enough. But I had to deal with it. Being only level 28, I wasn't able to do another level 30 enchant, so I decided to go into the nether with a looting too and test my luck. As I entered the nether portal, I went straight to the fortress and was able to pick up my first witherhead pretty quickly. But between days 77 and 84, I spent a very, very long time attempting to get all of the witherheads. I battled plenty of angry withers and was getting unlucky every single time. This left me with only one thing to do. After exploring the fortress and realizing this looting too wasn't going to cut it anymore, I went back to do some more enchanting. Seeing as all I had to do was get two looting twos to combine to a looting three, and then combine the two looting twos to make a looting three, that's what I did. I got to level 14 and was just about able to do the upgrade. 
I now had a looting three sword at my disposal. And from there on, it seemed like the Withers didn't want to stop dropping the Witherheads. I got all of the Witherheads I needed really, really fast, but I wasn't done with the Nether yet. Between days 91 and 97, I decided to go for Netherite. I thought maybe if I could get a Netherite sword, the Wither battle would be easier. So I tried to get as much Netherite as I could. Seeing as I was tight for time, I was only able to get a certain amount. That certain amount being 8 pieces of Ancient Debris. With 8 pieces of Ancient Debris, you're able to make 2 pieces of Netherite ingots, which was good enough for a pickaxe upgrade and a sword upgrade. I was debating whether I should upgrade my armor, but I realized pretty quickly it was way better to upgrade my pickaxe and sword, seeing as these had decent enchants. Before I knew it, it was day 99. I spent this day preparing for the Wither fight. I was able to get hold of some strength potions I had from the Ender Dragon fight left over, made some arrows and I was ready to go. I dug in one straight line, drunk my strength potion and I was ready to go. All I had to do was place the last Wither Head. And there it was. The Wither Head was placed and it was spawned. If anything was to go wrong, not only would I be out of the game, but the Wither also has explosive projectiles, meaning if it was to get up to my base, the whole entire island that I had would be gone. But thankfully, I had the effects of the Strength 2 keeping me going and the Wither was out the game before I knew it. And there it was. The Nether Star was gripped in my hands, so I went straight back to my base to craft it into a beacon. I placed the Nether Star right in the center of the crafting bench and there it was. I placed the beacon in my inventory and it was day 100. To finish off day 100, I put my beacon on my island, equipped its speed to it, and that was it. I stood on my bridge and gazed at the sun. That was it. The 100 days survived. On hardcore. All in one life. To be honest, there's a bunch more stuff I want to get done, so if you guys want to see another 100 days, then let me know down below in the comments. But apart from that, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day, and peace.